I have seen the first three episodes of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and I am more than delighted to share my opinion and give an honest review to this work. All jokes aside, I will make this review as unbiased and as objective as my abilities allow me to do so. So let's get into it. First of all, here is what Wikipedia says about the general reaction of the public. It has received generally positive reviews from the critics with particular praise for its plot, cinematography, visuals and musical score, but some criticism for its pacing. I absolutely agree. As you watch the first three episodes, the first thing that gets sedimented into your mind is there is obviously something wrong with the pacing of this work. As we all know, a good pace makes the race. If only the pace was as natural as the plot, as the cinematography and as the visuals. I really hope Christopher Nolan is going to take this criticism into account and make the right amendments regarding the second season. I honestly want to see a good old fashioned pace and I think that Amazon should get more inspired by some Marvel movies. As a huge Marvel Universe fan, I can assure you that their pacing is amazing. Have you seen the new Batman? Plot-wise, I believe that it's a very good work. Every line of text is filled with passion and some subliminal message that the author tries to get through to the audience. In the filmmaking industry, we call this double-sided message. A good example of this is in the first act of the first episode when Dumbledore tells Frodo, those people have suffered and the knee of tyranny has left them breathless. Go, my son, do my bidding, free these individuals from the chains of oppression. You want some smoke? Honestly, I believe that this is a reference to the ongoing social injustice issue and this is a simple reminder to this phenomenon. Simple yet so deep cutting and soul penetrating. Next up, there is an intense and very interesting scene that involves sexual intercourse between Galadriel and Obelix in which the latter asks the queen, Why, milady, are those armpits painted blue? For is it not profanity to deviate from thy true nature? To which she responds in an eager manner. Why do thou assume my true nature, my friend of sexual intercourse? Blue is the color of all that I wear. If this is not artistic lava viciously erupting from the hot volcanoes of human imagination, then I have no idea what this is. From the perspective of the cinematography, it is a very impressive piece of work. It is unique, fascinating, and most importantly, it is diverse. Never listen to those non-woke fascists that tell you that the casting director has hired people of color for the sake of hiring people of color. Honestly, this assumption has been disapproved thousands of times and I'm really tired of being more descriptive regarding this issue. It is very sad to me that such narrow-minded individuals still exist and I think that the best solution to this situation is collectively canceling them. There is a very thorough video on this topic, you can find it here. I recommend you go and check it out. The most horrifying part of those three episodes is when at the end of the second one, Sauron gathers a ginormous army of blood riders near King's Landing and he holds an epic speech there. Here is a fragment from it. Now, this looks like a job for me. So everybody, just follow me. Because we need a little controversy. Because it feels so empty without me. What does Sauron mean by this emptiness at the end? I personally believe that this is an attempt of the author to say that human existence itself implies a certain unity between contrasting elements. There is no good 
without evil and there is no evil without good and if you get rid of one element in this equation the world automatically loses its primal harmony as a consequence as for the musical part of this work it was predominantly created by the famous Swedish classical composer called Daruda. At the end of the second episode, while Sauron holds his infamous speech about emptiness, Daruda's sonata called Sandstorm plays. It is extremely percussive, extremely fear-inducing, and simply magnificent. This looks like a job for me. So everybody, just follow me, cause we need a little controversy. By the way, Darudo Sandstorm was also the soundtrack of Dune, so that's the movie you might have heard it from. So, to wrap things up, how would I rate this series? Uh, I need to take a short look into my notes. Personally, a 10 out of 10 from me. Forget about the pacing thing, it has good casting, amazing storylines, and a lot of potential. There were moments where I cried, there were moments where I was genuinely happy, <laughs> and there were even moments where I came.